Moving on to our other story we're tracking today. There's been some concern over the last couple of days that there were discrepancies in the arithmetic of the union budget. Or that the math was wrong. Reports have been doing the rounds that Nirmala Sitaraman's budget didn't tally or there was nearly 2 lakh crore rupees missing. Now, if you give me a minute, I'll take you through what the problem really was. The problem was not about numbers tallying. The problem was about the use of data or estimates and the use of different data and different estimates. So every year, when the budget is presented, the government estimates what its revenue will be for that year, what its income will be for that year. And based on that estimate, it decides what its expenditure is going to be. At the end of that same financial year, the government then revises the estimates and presents them again. The final numbers are actually only known two years down. So this year, during the interim budget, you'll remember that was presented at the beginning of February instead of the end of it, there was a revised estimate of revenue that was made. Now, experts felt that that estimate was too ambitious and we wouldn't meet that target. And rightly so, in the four months that followed, the Comptroller Auditor General, or the CAG, which is the accountant of the government, put out the actual revenue numbers or the provisional receipts. We missed our targets. The revised estimate was 17.3 lakh crore rupees. The CAG numbers was 15.6 lakh crore rupees. So that's a shortfall of 1.7 lakh crore rupees of a target we didn't achieve. That's 1% of the country's GDP. Now here's the problem. The Finance Ministry used the old numbers. The Finance Ministry's own economic survey that was released by the economic advisor to the government a day before the budget announcement used the CAG numbers, but the budget itself used the old estimates from February. Why is that a problem? Because the gap was so wide. Now, this has been done in previous interim budgets as well. But in this particular case, the gap between what was announced in the interim budget and what the actual numbers are this time was a lot wider. And this gap then brings into question the revenue projections for the coming year because we project what we're going to do for the coming year based on these numbers. Which means if we use the CAG numbers, then the government is expecting tax revenues to grow by 25%, which is an astronomically high expectation. It's also perhaps unlikely. This would also mean that GDP growth target and fiscal deficit targets might also be unrealistic. So the question we have to ask is this, the target of that $5 trillion for our economy, is that target currently based on shaky math? If this is true, the government will also find itself running out of money towards the end of the year. And this is not good for a country that is currently purely depending on government spending to rescue us from a slumping economy. Now, you'll remember that for the last eight months on this channel, we've been raising questions about the health of our economy. A lot of that question or those questions have now come to roost. We've seen today the sales of auto of vehicles have, is down 25%. Some of this is very scary, but the question we have to ask is this. There is obviously an error. Is it a clerical error? Is it somebody trying to cover up a bad day or a bad economy? Or is this the normal course of things? And what does this mean really for our economy? We've seen that this government has had several run-ins in the past as far as numbers, data and GDP is concerned. Is this part of that same point? To answer our questions, we have Mr. C.M. Vasudev, the former Finance Secretary, and Finance Secretary's help in drafting the budget, which is why Mr. Vasudev's voice is going to be so important. Uh, Professor Jethi Ghosh, Professor of Econ uh, Economics at JNU, one of the uh, few people who pointed out and saw the error first. Mr. Gopal Agarwal, the spokesperson of the BJP. Only three guests, and I'm very glad to have all three of them. Uh, Mr. Vasudev, I'm going to come to you first. Uh, as a former Finance Secretary, do you see this discrepancy of 2 lakh crore rupees is something that's standard? Is it out of ordinary? Is it something that worries you? Well, I, I wouldn't say that it is standard, nor would I say that it is totally out of uh, ordinary. Mm. You know, when you do budget making, there are three or four stages at which the numbers are estimated. First is the budget estimates, which is the B numbers, which are the estimates for the year that is going to come. Revised estimates are for the year that has gone by. It is a, a difference between the budget estimates for that year and the revised estimates. Then there are provisional actuals, and then there are actuals. You know, in the past, there have been variations between revised estimates and actuals, because earlier the budget used to be presented, say, in end of February, 
and the expenditure budget was prepared around December or so. So there was a two months or two and a half months period between the uh, revised estimates and the actual expenditure. So there, was, there used to be wide variation between the revised estimates and the actuals at that time. But now, you know, this year it is, I'm a little sort of befuddled here. We were firstly on two accounts. One is that the finance minister chose not to talk about expenditure numbers in the budget speech at all. Yes. It's very unusual because, you know, budget is what is budget basically is an estimate of expenditure and revenue. And it is parliament which has to approve the appropriations out of the Consolidated Fund of India. So how much appropriations are being asked for, which department, their demands for grants. For, so that was, that was a big sort of strange thing that has been done this year, that no, budget, no expenditure numbers were given in the budget speech. Secondly, you know, this year the uh, financial year ended on 31st March, and we are doing a, a budget on, in the first week of July. Yes. So there was enough time, I think, to have a more a more up-to-date revised estimates instead of relying on estimates which were made in February. They may have been correct at that time, that because the estimates which the finance minister puts into the budget, they come from different ministries. Hmm. They, the finance ministry itself doesn't go into yes. individual numbers at that stage. The estimates come from different ministries. They say that out of a budget our budget allocation of so much, it is likely that by 31st March, I will be able to spend so much. So those are entered as revised estimates. But the actual, the provisional actuals which come after the year has passed by, there is, there there is a variation between revised estimates and the provisional actuals. But this year, there was so much time for the government to revise its estimates and bring the revised estimates closer to the actual numbers, because the, you were presenting a budget in July and the year has already passed uh, on 31st March. So why they chose to do that, but there, there was not enough time between the mm. elections and presentation of the budget. So they took the easy way out that the February numbers yes, were there, yes. they just put them as revised estimates. So you see that those differences. But I don't see that there is any Anything, I think, deliberate in that sense. Okay. It is just, I think, lack of time between the election and presentation of budget. They chose to uh, have the revised estimates of, of uh, February. All right. Uh, so we have Professor Ghosh, Professor Jethi Ghosh also with us. Professor Ghosh, do you see this as lack of time or an inordinate, you know, uh, an, perhaps human error? Or do you think there's more to this? Hello? Yes, Professor Ghosh, can you hear me? Well, let me put yes. it this way. We are not talking about a marginal difference. We are talking about very, very significant shortfalls. We are talking around 1% of GDP shortfall in the revenues. 13% of the budget has shrunk. And the government knows this. The finance ministry knows this because they have also cut expenditure in the past year. I think the point that people are missing, it's not just that the revenues went down. Mm. Expenditures also came down by 1.5 lakh crore. Now, that means the government knew that they're not collecting these taxes and to maintain a fiscal deficit ratio, they actually cut down on spending. Because of the opacity, we don't know where they cut down. We don't know which ministries cut. We don't know which programs didn't get the funds. So it's actually a completely opaque budget. None of the budget numbers that have been presented for last year are valid. Because we're talking very, very large discrepancies. We're talking 13, 14% differences in the total revenues and in the total spending. Now, I think that cannot Six. be an accident. And I think, therefore, it's also not an accident the finance minister presented a speech without any numbers at all. Because if she actually gave the correct numbers, it would have been a little embarrassing for the government. We are talking about, I mean, possibly significant declines in spending. Now, it's not just a question of embarrassment. I think there's a democratic issue here. A budget is passed by parliament and all the discussions are about the allocations. How much are you going to spend on this? How much outlay on that? People are debating hotly. Are you going to increase in agriculture? Are you going to increase for women and children and so on? And then at the end of it, you have spent a completely different amount from what you have budgeted. And we don't know. Parliament does not know. The people at large do not know. I think there's a real problem here. This kind of opacity, frankly, is unacceptable in a democracy. So then, of course, there's the point you had mentioned about the, the fact that the fiscal deficit 
hmm. is actually larger than was presented. She, uh, the finance minister said the fiscal deficit for last year was 3.3%. That's not true. According to these numbers, it would be at least 3.45%. Right. I, I just quickly want to bring in um, Mr. Vasudev. Mr. Vasudev, here are the problems that um, Professor Ghosh has pointed out. Uh, you know, a democratic problem of the lack of information to Parliament and to citizens, a problem of, uh, you know, um, misestimating. And she, I, I believe, very clearly disagreed with you that this was perhaps not, um, you know, not intended. You said it was perhaps unintentional. She said if the government has cut down its spending over the last year, then it knows that it wasn't actually making those targets, which means that this was not unintentional. This was intentional. Do you have a rebuttal before I bring in Mr. Agarwal? Yeah, I think uh, the point really is that we're talking about a variation of 6 7% between. You know, we are talking about revised estimates which were paid sometime in December, and we are now, and the economic survey had the luxury of being able to present the latest numbers which are available from the Controller General of Accounts. So that, be that as it may, I think the point about the expenditure having been compressed, I think we have to see the areas in which the comp expenditure compression has been shown in the budget. And also, perhaps it is not entirely we correct to say that there was a total uh, lack of transparency, total because, no, let me just complete my point, because the expenditure budget was presented to parliament. It's a different thing which the finance minister did not uh, spell out those numbers in the budget speech, which I agree should have been done. But to say that they were held back from parliament may not be correct because the entire expenditure budget was tabled along with the budget documents. The second point is I think the difference in the fiscal deficit or the expenditure compression, we have to see the real numbers. But my, from my experience, I feel what the government or the finance ministry people generally do is because of the system, we don't have accrual-based accounting. We have cash accounting in government system with the result that there are a lot of payable items to, say, Food Corporation of India, to various fertilizer companies, to oil companies for subsidy. So to balance sort of to look to make the fiscal deficit look a little better, some of these payables are not shown in the budget and they are carried forward. But since we don't have an accrual system of accounting under which that should have, that would get reflected, it doesn't get reflected in the government budget because it is on cash basis. But I would be very surprised to if there were actual compression of development or uh, uh, type of expenditure, and because it is not been possible in one month for the finance ministry to do that. Ex uh, sanctions have been issued, the different ministries, different departments are uh, spending money. The finance ministry only has the flexibility of holding back payment of subsidy money, say, to Food Corporation of India or to the oil companies. All right, so let me and just bring in Mr. Agarwal. It also happens that the capital expenditure on the defense side orders... Okay. Uh, let me just bring in Mr. Agarwal. Mr. Agarwal, um, so here are the things that are being said. One is they could have been a, perhaps an unintentional... Can I just come back? I mean... No, no, one second. Let me just bring in Mr. Agarwal. You'll want to respond to him as well. Unintentional clerical error that has taken place. Secondly... If the budget was being presented in July, there was enough time to use the updated CAG numbers that were used in the economic survey the previous day. Is this an attempt to hide numbers from the citizens or was there a mistake? Because there isn't really a third option. No, uh, no uh, I would like to say here, Faye, is that if you are talking, only anybody is talking on intention, nobody can debate an intention. Mm. Everybody has his own way of uh, interpreting what are the intentions. Second point I would like to mention here is that if anybody is saying that the government is, was trying to hide those numbers, then from where these numbers have come? It is from the uh, economic survey of the government alone. And it's our government which has presented the economic survey. So. The, uh, today, the uh, uh, finance minister has also clarified there is a difference. It was pointed out in our documents only, but it also t uh, tells about that these are two different uh, figures that we are talking about. It's not that the revised estimate is uh, uh, different in both uh, documents. It, at one, uh, in the budget document, it is the revised estimate which has been taken, and in the economic survey, it is the provisional estimate that has been taken. So these are two different figures. It is not that the same figures have been uh, ch uh, uh, showing different figures. The third point I would like to mention is uh, the FM has also said that why we chose 
to take revised estimate is that she has said that we wanted it in comparison to earlier interim budget where revised estimate figures were taken. And if you were saying that just because these figures are different and, and uh, the, the, therefore expenditure etc. will also be different. So those these are all estimates. Ultimately, Agarwal, in the corporate Mr. world, Mr. Agarwal, most of us are How can this be in comparison to the interim budget when you have not changed the numbers no, with the interim budget? You're using the same numbers, so it's not a comparison. It, 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 that doesn't that argument actually doesn't it's make sense. It's a comparison of figures that we are talking. No, but you haven't changed them. You haven't no, updated it the is figures. No, a comparison of figures that it is changing. May May no, one second, Professor Ghosh, go ahead. Professor so there Ghosh. is there is comparison with other figures. No, no, I am telling you. You know, I, I it's think not I was the not comparison of revised estimate of two may, figures. May, no, no, one is, second. I am telling you. Yeah, yeah okay, I'm one second. You, Professor Ghosh will, will respond. The comparison of figures, what was allocated in uh, uh, interim budget and what is given in the final budget, and ultimately okay. all are estimates. So no. these estimates can change. This will change. It will again change. But just simply saying that the, uh, there are uh, the estimates that are not the actual figures, and it has been happening. Okay, in Mr. All the I heard you out. I heard you out. All right, uh, uh, Professor Ghosh, rebuttal, please. You know, okay, I think I did not make myself clear the first time. These numbers that have come out in the economic survey show that both taxation and spending were about 13 to 14% less than has been mentioned in the revised estimates. The entire budget documents, all the detailed documents, both in the receipts budget and the expenditure budget, relate to only the revised estimates. So they add up to the revised estimates. But we know that the actual spending was 13% less. Mm. In fact, 14% less. So where were the actual cuts? We do not know. We do not know whether the cuts... In fact, every year they do this thing it about not, not paying the food corporation, not paying the employment scheme. All of that thing happens every year. But clearly, these are much larger and very swinging cuts. We are talking of cuts of 1.5 lakh crore. Where did they fall? We do not know because the budget documents do not tell us. They pretend that that whole um, and larger amount was spent. To me, that is a pretense because we are not talking small numbers here. It's not a minor variation. It's not a 2-3%, which is normal, which is expected. We are talking a huge decline. And that kind of huge decline cannot happen in terms of both revenues and expenditure unless the government is aware of this by December and has already started cutting back. Well, let's now, let's... It, is, uh, it behoves the government to mm. tell the citizenry, to tell parliament that, look, we hey. were facing a revenue crisis. The GST didn't pan out as we wanted. We got much le lower revenues than we expected. And so we have cut, and we have cut in the following areas. This is what is expected in a democracy. And I, I think the problem is that this has not happened. Well, and uh, the other point about this is yes. that if these revenues are so much lower then it really means the state governments have suffered massively. And state governments must have actually been denied funds as well. You can't get that kind of cut without state governments also getting lower GST revenues and getting lower shares of central taxes. So some big changes have occurred last year, which we are not told about at all. Well, when I, yes. if you actually assume that last year's provisional actuals are the correct figures, you are absolutely crazy optimistic in terms of your revenue projections for the next year. You're expecting new revenues, additional revenues of 4 lakh crore. Yes. How? Okay. Where? Where is it going to come from? The 25% well, increase ask, that you Let's mentioned. ask Mr. Agarwal the questions it, one it by one. Just one happen. second, one second, one second. Mr. So Agarwal. I think there's yes. a real problem with all of these budget figures. And in all honesty, the finance ministry should simply come back and now tell the people the truth, saying, OK, Okay. The numbers were not what we expected last year. Now we're telling you that this is what has happened. And because of that, we cut down on our spending in the following areas. Yes. Because of last year's performance, we are expecting yes. the following kind of changes next year. Instead right. of so, so let me, let me just ask Mr. Agarwal a couple of questions, please, if I may. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, my first question to you is the CAG provisional um, you know, data that has come out on what the actual collections of tax were. Do you, is, is that data, according to the government of India, reliable data? Because it has been picked up by the economic survey. Are you willing to trust the CAG? Yes, it okay, is a government CG. body. It is an uh, economic CG. survey also says 
But if you can, uh, though we are not denying that the provisional figures are wrong. It is only that what it's a factual statement that the budget statement is take, talking, taken revised estimate and the economic survey has taken a provisional estimate. Okay, so my next question to you, Mr. Agarwal. One second, one second. I have, I have lots of questions. Let me work through my questions one are, by one. No, no, let no, no, me, one second, let one me finish. My next question no, to you let, is this. Was point, there a no, cut point. in the, no, no, finish, in the expenditure of the government of India no, last no. year? Was there a reduction in the expenditure of the government of India last year, yes or no? That the figures will also be there in the budget uh, figures. If there is a According change or to the in the CGA, provisional, there everything has will been. be out. It is only a matter of time. According to the CGA, there has been no, a cut. It's all how would you have maintained? How would you have maintained your fiscal deficit if your revenue has come down, but your uh, your, your expenditure has not? You obviously had to cut the expenditure at some point in December, no, January the, last year. Definitely, there will be change from the figures. If the actual figures are different from the revised or provisional, definitely actual figure will show what it is. Okay, Nobody so if that's the case, that the then the government was aware of the fact estimate that is, the expenditure also. also was being cut because you would have had to do it in December last year or January last year before or, or February or March is, or April. You've had to do it already. So why did it not reflect in the budget? Why did we pretend the that the estimates of February were in fact true or still true? No, nobody is pretending. Both the figures have been, if there was an intentionally something was wrong, then the why the economic survey will give that figure. So you can talk about that the quality of provisional estimate may be better. We should always take provisional estimate. But the convention was in the budget that revised estimate is taken. That is, that therefore, they always, the revised estimate has been taken. And ultimately, whatever is the actual Mr. Mr. or Mr. Mr. Further, Mr. the government Mr. Mr. Gopal Agarwal, last question. Revisions. Based on so, the actuals, no, no, the government expects revenues of, no. from taxes to grow by 25% no. in the next one year. Is that even logical or possible? Doesn't that mean that the $5 trillion economy is based on, right now, weak arithmetic? No, it is not the, uh, that the five trillion dollar economy is on the weak arithmetic. If there is ex uh, uh, the government budget does not alone determine the GDP growth rate, who says that government the government spending, expenditure alone Mr. will determine Mr. how far the economy will grow? We are currently it an economy entirely the, dependent on government spending. The figures are not entirely no, dependent on government pay. spending. Where is the private no, no, investment no, this at this point? There is nothing. Motion. No, no. We are talking of sovereign debt bonds, uh, foreign uh, FDI. You, where is the question that re a government expenditure is determining the GDP? It is part of the overall expenditure which the government right. has done. And the GDP is quite different figure. GDP, rate of growth of GDP may be no, no, much don't, different. Don't fix it. Okay, one second. Lower, I want to give uh, the last word right now to Mr. Vasudev. Uh, Mr. Vasudev. Lower revenue okay, Mr. Vasudev has heard out uh, both the, the arguments. The, third, the point is, Mr. Vasudev, like, uh, like you pointed yeah. out in your first argument, that if, and as uh, Professor Ghosh is saying, if the, if the government had to cut its own spending last year, it was aware of the fact that those provisional, that the uh, revised estimates of the interim budget no longer applied. What impact will this have, Mr. Vasudev, on the year going forward? Because what's done is done. But on the year going forward, what impact will it have? You know, just two or three things. One is that, uh, that we, every year the budget estimates for the next year are compared to budget estimates of the previous year. So it is always BE to BE. It's not it's never done that the provisional actuals are compared with the budget estimates of the next year. It doesn't happen. Mm. The budget making exercise is based on comparing BE to BE. Mm. So whatever is the increase over the in, in tax revenues, it is with reference to the BE numbers, not with reference to the provisional actual numbers. And it has to be conceded, I'm sure government should also concede, that this was the first year of the GST and estimation of GST collections was fraught with a lot of uncertainty and that is what has happened.
But I, I hope that in the next year and all that, that uncertainty will become less. Secondly, with regard to the expenditure compression, surely, it's, you know, the problem really arose because you're having December revised estimates putting out in July and comparing them with the provisional actuals of June, July. So that is, that is where the problem is arising. But the government, when it came to know that there is a shortfall in the revenue receipts, in the tax receipts, I think to, to maintain a figure of fiscal deficit, it's a fiddle which has been done, according to me, that the payable amounts which were due to, on account of subsidies to Food Corporation of India, to the oil companies and the others, they have been held back, and therefore expenditure is shown to be less because that is how the government accounting is done. But I can't imagine that there has been any compression of real expenditure on development or grants to the states or state shares in taxes. That cannot happen. If that were happening, states would have made so much noise. It is really the compression of expenditure arising out of uh, carrying forward of payment payable amounts on Mr. subsidies. Mr. Vasseh, shouldn't they have to told us instead of us having so to speculate like this? I don't see like this? this as a very major problem. Yeah, they should have. Sure, sure, sure they should have. Even now, I am also speculating. It's only yes. based on my past experience that I, I am just giving them uh, uh, credit in that sense. But they must come out with the actual reason where the expenditure of 1,50,000 crore mm -hmm. has been compressed. Yes. And uh, that, that should come out. I'm sure some parliament question somebody will ask and it will come out. But my own sort of guess is that it is really that type of expenditure which has led to these uh, fiscal deficit yes. numbers. And there's no compression of real expenditure. That's right. what um, I feel. So this is where we are right now, that yeah. uh, they, there has been a change from February to July in the revenue that the government has got and the amount of money it could spend, its previous estimates were off the mark because obviously we didn't make as much money as we thought we would make as a country and that would have required us to adjust our expenses. Now the problem here is we don't know where those expenses have been adjusted and also all future then estimates will be based on these estimates would need to be re-looked at. There is a element of opacity that needs to be removed and the government needs to tell us very clearly what money has come in, what money has gone out and where that expenditure has gone simply because in a democracy, the citizens deserve to know. That's where we are right now. But we are, in fact, under on the budget, and that's because we didn't collect enough money as taxes as we had thought last year, and that wasn't entirely made clear in the budget that was announced.